Tatu Mowi Gai Uki. Hi everyone, welcome back and welcome for the very first time and a happy new year to all of you. I hope 2021 is going to be a lot more promising than the last one, but still. I want to kick off my channel this year with a brand new series and that series is called So You Want To Get Into and the whole idea of this is to discuss directors that I love and basically I want to discuss the best entry points to get to know a director and what they're all about. I get a question every now and again about certain directors like oh how do I get into certain this X, Y, and Z, and how do I really approach going into the filmography? And this idea has been brewing for a while, and I just thought, you know what, the hell with it, I'm going to execute this. And our first director we're going to be talking about is the legend Hong Sang Soo. For me, he is a director that I've been watching since about 2015. I've watched about 16 of his films altogether now. He's done 28-ish, I think, so far. There's more on the way because he makes multiple films a year. But the whole premise of this video is I'm going to talk about my overall experience with the director. Then we're going to talk about their style and what they kind of bring to the cinematic table. And then I'm going to recommend three different films as an entry point into the director's work. And this is basically the considered masterpiece or magnum opus of their filmography. My personal favourite and a film that I think that actually shows the director in a way that really gives the full bodied work of set artist. So I hope you enjoy this experience and uh, let's get cracking. Let's begin with my experience with Hong Sang Soo. I began watching Hong Sang Soo films when I went to the BFI London Film Festival a few years ago and I watched On the Beach at Night Alone. And to be honest with you, I did not fully connect with the director at this point. I had known who Kim Min Hee was through Handmaiden and to be honest with you, I fell in love with her from there and then, and then I understood that they were in a relationship together, etc. But initially I was not really into this kind of humanistic, domestic realism kind of realm. I wasn't quite there yet, but as I persistently went through his work, I kind of understood him a lot more. And initially I'd seen year by year, I've watched all of the films that he's worked with Kim Min Hee from Right Now Wrong Then, we've seen Grass, Hotel by the River, On the Beach of That Alone, as I've explained. There's a numerous amounts of films within this kind of setting, and I think the latter half of his career has been a lot more freestyle to the extent that he doesn't exactly give a damn what people want, he just makes what he wants to create. And I really respect that, but as you go backwards in time to his earlier works, there's a bit more structure to the work and a bit more of a linear kind of narrative that makes a bit more sense. And when we look at Tale of Cinema, Woman is Future Man, Oki Story, there's a lot of films that really just set a precedence. And I really think that the formulaic side of Hong Sang Soo was just an experimental phase that kind of basically evoked this kind of sense of realistic dramas that he's making now and in all honesty I do prefer the latter half of Hong Sang Soo's career personally because I love this kind of realistic touch that he gives within his films and to be honest with you I love I love his work it's, it's very difficult to get his movies but you can get them from Cinema Guild I've got Grass um, I have two versions of The Beach of Night Alone. This is the Cinema Guild one. Claire's Camera is a fantastic film. I love this one also. Um, I'll discuss this one a little bit more later. There's an Arrow. This is like the only UK Blu-ray. This has got Woman of the Future and Man and Tale Cinema. And then we've got a couple of... I don't know where this is from, but I've got this Kirstie of Premium Blu-ray. Thank you very much. And obviously the the most talked about film right now, Wrong Then, which is a plain archive. I, I'm trying to collect more of his films because I really want to own them. They're very difficult to get hold of. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say to you is I, I do love 
and admire Hong Sang Soo very much. Moving forward now, we are going to be talking about the style and the whole idea of the world of Hong Sang Soo. And basically, the first thing you need to know is that French cinema is a massive influence on Sang Soo's work, particularly. 60s, 70s, 80s, I think this is kind of the domain that he's kind of evolved his concepts of South Korean cinema. And he's a massive fan of Eric Romare. Uh, the Green Ray is one of his favorite films of all time. And if you have not seen it, I would recommend. And this is the weird thing. I actually watched Hong Sang Soo films before I watched Eric Romare films. And to be honest with you, I think watching the Sang Soo is kind of like basically helped me understand more of what Romero was about because this kind of similarities of realism and comedy and drama and framing, <laughs> the framing is kind of the same, a lot of static shots, very slow zooms, they are very prominent in both of these directors' works, but I don't think Sang Soo copies. Sang Soo basically creates his own kind of world within his aesthetic and the main things that we see in these films are walking, talking and drinking. There's a lot of soju drunk in his films and I really love this kind of idea because it gives you more of the idea of culture and the kind of existence of South Korean people and how they live day to day. This kind of sense of domestic realism as they call it is very prominent and while some people might find it repetitive I find it quite therapeutic because I think to myself sometimes I wonder how people live day to day in other countries and I think Sang Soo kind of like delivers that kind of idea for me but the thing is also a lot of the focus on Sang Soo's films is very middle class I think and com not coming from a middle class background. I find it hard to kind of connect with them on a personal level but I think that human element is what really gives the gravitas of his work. I think connecting with these characters and while these films are subtitled there is so much that is given and there's a lot of emotion that is bring forward from his cast. He does usually repeat his cast members quite often and I think that works well for him. Obviously Kim Min Hee is probably one of the most well-known actors that he uses and I think in every film that she has been in for Hong Sang Soo, I do believe that she gives 120 million percent of effort. With Hong Sang Soo though, everything is not scheduled. It's very spontaneous. The script is written on the day. There's a lot of improvisation. It's constantly changing and evolving the narrative. And he never really uses beautiful settings. It's all usually in residential areas. And it kind of builds this further realistic aesthetic that he tries to delve into. And this is what we look into Sang Su is that he really is just trying to connect with people, I think, in a deep level. And I think when we look at his whole body of work, yes, okay, there is no subtle changes, but there is a different dynamic element every time and a different kind of sense of understanding people from that humanistic kind of level. And for me, I think this kind of spontaneity of art house cinema is very refreshing. I think kind of sticking to an aesthetic that he loves and works around so well is brilliant. And the fact that he just has the courage to kind of delve deeper into the human psyche without making it a massive Christopher Nolan clusterfuck of a film, he keeps it simple. And there is an elegance to the simplicity that I truly admire and respect. And I think once more people understand more about Sang Su's kind of idealism, then you can connect to the director a lot more. Right then, on to my recommendations for you to safely go into the world of Hong Sang Soo without feeling scared. And the first one we will discuss is the considered masterpiece on Magnum Opus As You Will. And that obviously is right now wrong then. This is a 2015 film that was a critical hit and it has basically made Hong Sang Soo on a godlike level, I think. This 
is a film that doesn't beat around the bush because it is a very honest, it's very straight to the point. And I won't discuss the plot because you should really delve into these films without knowing too much and I don't really want to spoon feed you thoughts or concepts about the films. But basically, the sense of honesty in this film is what makes it brilliant. And I think it is full of the usual Hong sang Su traits of the static shots, the zooms, everything that makes him such a simple yet effective director is all compacted into this film. And if you really want to start with any of his films, I do personally think that Right Now Wrong Men is probably one of the best films that has come out in South Korea in the last 20 years. And I love it to death. Um, I, I've only revisited it a few times, but every time I go back, I just truly love this film. Now then, remember when I said that I didn't have a good time with On the Beach a Night Alone? Well, actually, it became my personal favourite eventually, and this is my next recommendation to you. On the Beach at Night Alone was a film that really grabbed me the second time I watched it because I fully understood more of what Hong sang Su was about. And I love this idea of isolation in this film and the loneliness that Kim Min Hee is going through. And this is a lot more quiet than his usual films. And I think that's why so many people fail to connect with it that much. It's, it leaves you to think and there's the spaces to breathe, I think, within the whole idea of On the Beach and Night Alone. And it truly is beautifully coloured. There is there is a sense of dissident distaste for life, but also it really has a small glimmer of hope. And I think this kind of human connection that he builds is beautifully encapsulated in this film. My next recommendation, and I don't own a copy of this yet, but I want to own it at some point, is Night and Day from 2008. This was a film that I think kind of shows, again, what Hong sang Soo is about. It is a beautifully balanced film that has a tender sentence of pain, but also it has beautiful glimmers of hope. And he really does show emotion like no other artist, if you ask me. And what I loved about Night and Day was it was actually set in Paris, so it's out of his own conformities. And it kind of, the way that he kind of connects with French cinema, I think that is really shining in Night and Day. It really gives a bit more nuance to the whole idea of Hong sang Su. And when you're going into this film, just think about sang Su's connection with French cinema. This is basically what makes it so eloquent and interesting but also it is a beautiful film about love and a love for art and I think in 2008 this is pre Kim Min Hee this is what about 10 years into his career it really just shows an artist kind of finding his way in the world and I think Night and Day beautifully encapsulates kind of Sang Su's idealisms and what he's completely about. I hope that this kind of little video has helped you understand the director a bit more and I hope you take these recommendations on and give Hong Sang Su a chance. He's a director that really deserves a lot more attention and basically should be loved by most cinephiles if you ask me on a personal level. If you like this video, please let me know in the comment section below what you thought of it. If you have any comments, if you have any things that you want me to change. This is obviously the first one I've ever done and I've not really seen a video similar to this. So please let me know in the comment section below how I can change this or how you want to know more. If you want more recommendations, just let me know down here because I'm always intrigued to know what you guys are thinking. And the next video I'm going to do is going to be about Claire Denis and that will be out in February. So keep an eye out for that. And reviews are slowly going to start coming out over the next couple of weeks. I'm not quite sure what yet because cinema is a bit quiet right now. So we shall see what happens. But I hope you're doing well and like, share, subscribe, do as you please. And all I can say now is Dio Danka, Obigado, Merci Boku, Arigato, Danka Shin, Bitishin, all the shins, and obviously never change. And watch more Hong Sang Su films. They're very good. Bye.